Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Karen Newman, and welcome to the Saturday Hukula webinar. This is December 16th, 2017. Today, Jim Charles will be channeling for us. And in our room, on the, on the chat, we have myself, Sheer, Salish, Marlene, Leela, James, Jim Charles, of course, <laughs> Ian, and Alex on the controls, and Ava. Jim, who do you have in your room? In our room, we have Angela, Dawn, uh, Barbara, and Lana. And Ray went outside, but he'll be back in. OK, perfect. Um, just before we start, we just want to let you know this is Human Colony. You can uh, read all about us at humancolony.org. And we have an event coming up in February. It is the Ascension Workshop. It'll be February 1st through the 6th. We're running a special right now if you'd like to go to lovely Sedona, Arizona for 278 down and then 278 at the time of the workshop. Uh, you, can, you can split up your payments just like that. They'll be teaching galactic Reiki. They'll be doing telepathy and all kinds of different things with channeling. Uh, Jonathan C. Martin will also be there channeling <clears throat> as well. And be quiet in the background over there, James is saying to you. All right. Um, James, who is a guest here, is going to do a, um, a, in place of our blessing, he's going to be uh, invoking some positive energy for us. Go ahead, James. Thank you. And again, I must apologize. I've had a, a chest infection, so I do sound very rough. Uh, so I'll apologize now. But yes, let's get started. Beloved mighty I am presence, Father in heaven and Elohim. By the flame that you have given me in my heart, I do now ask you to help me to draw with the power of my third eye vision, a solar ring around myself, a solar ring around everyone here in the webinar, all beings assisting Gaia on her ascension and Gaia herself. Thank you. Anybody else want to do a blessing? Me. Oh, we finished yet? Oh, okay. Finished them. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Continue. Let the solar rings together with the dual action of the twin consciousness, Alpha and Omega, and twin flames, with the platform for all our tubes of light. Beloved mighty I am presence in the name I am that I am. Unfold us all now in our mighty magic electronic tube of ascended master's light substance. See that it keeps us invisible, invincible, and invulnerable to everything but thy almighty perfection. So be its beloved mighty I am presence in the name I am that I am. Beloved mighty I am presence in the name I am that I am. With the magnetic power of the sacred flame in my heart, I now invoke the violet flame in the name of Sanjima to transmute returning karma and to purify the elements of this material world. I call for the solutions to our personal and global problems. Blaze this flame into all negativity. May it raise our consciousness to your divine plan. So be it, the beloved mighty I am presence in the name I am that I am. Mighty I am presence. I now invoke electric wall of blue flames surrounding all our tubes of light as added detection in the name of Archangel Michael and his legions and under the blu ray protect us all from the negativity. So be it, beloved mighty I am presence in the name I am that I am. <sighs> Father, I accept this done your way today, and I'm in gratitude for the wonderful tools and the lights the masters have given us. So be it, beloved mighty I am presence in the name I am that I am. 
Thank you, Father. We must choose. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else in the room that's going to do? A, there's someone on your side, Jim. It's doing. Anybody want to do a blessing? Yes, we have Barbara. Barbara, I also I want you to get a chair and bring it up close so you can hear. All right, because she's having trouble hearing. You brought my hearing. Okay, okay. perfect. Go ahead. Be with us today in the purest of spirit, in the highest of hopes, in the highest of integrity. We ask that you be here in the whitest of light, in the purest of information. Thank you, dear God, for all that you give to us and that you are here amongst us and that you are not a stranger. Thank okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Anybody else? We're good? Okay. So we okay. had requests for Blue Avians, the Andromedans, I believe, uh, Takur. Uh, there was a request from Sheer from a name I cannot remember, something Karen. I re heard that much. Shell Curran is a magical study person. Kar Kellen? Is Kar Kellen. It was yes. Was um, that right, Sheer? Yeah. Kar Kellen? Yes, Kar Kellen. Kar Kellen, okay. Kar Kellen. And there's one for Karan, who is a blue gray, a blue gray. Interesting. Very good. Okay. And All right, we're ready when you are. The Council was also, or the or Octorian Council was also asked for, or was it Orion Council? I thought it was Andromedan. Andromedan Council. Okay, we haven't heard from them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any of the councils will be welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't want to exclude anybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Pashat. Pashat for, uh, was Marlene's. Uh, Pashat Pesh, rep. Pesh was Marlene, who is that? Oh, the Pashat are the lion people. Okay. Oh, the lion people. Oh, it's interesting. That would be great to hear from them. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, we'll see you when you we'll see you in uh, blessings to you. And again, thank you for always being here. <clears throat> thank you. Um, sorry for the lateness of our beginning, but I'm sure that there was a reason for that. Perhaps some of the beings that were meant to be here had could not arrive on time. So but Elijah is here for a quick message. And then we will see who else comes in. But his message, he said, is very short today. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. We'll see you when you get back. Thank you very much. Many blessings. Blessings to you. Low vibration, she's going through a lot in her life. Greetings, I am Elijah. Greetings, Elijah. Blessings to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I want to speak today about grace, and I'm not sure everyone even knows what that is. Some people think it's a blessing that you say after when you're going to eat something, or some people think it is uh, an action or an activity that is uh, casual or very beautiful from a woman, graceful. But this kind of grace I am talking about is the forgiving grace of God. 
he does forgive those who believe in him and understand him those things that are innocent sins he does not hold anything against you that you might do in integrity or out of goodness of your heart even though it may end up to be hurting someone else you know, unintentionally or doing something that people do not feel is appropriate now I'll give you an example of what I am talking about Mary Magdalene used expensive oils to clean the feet of Christ when he was on earth and the disciples thought it was a waste they thought it was a not the right thing to be doing with these expensive oils they could use it to get money and and to further the the kingdom and further their ministries but what did Jesus say to them this is what she feels is right to do <laughs> So if she feels that this is the right thing to do, let her do it. This is what she feels is appropriate. Whether you feel that it is appropriate for her to do this or not, it is for her to do what she feels is right in the sight of God. So there are things that some of you will feel right to do in the sight of God that others will will say, no, that's not, not what I would do. That's not appropriate. But if you feel that you are being led to do something for God, it does not matter what anyone else says. Pray and make sure that you are doing the right thing because it may have a great meaning in some other realm, in some other thought process, in some other life. So when we look back and see what Mary did, we can say, we understand now why she did that. We can understand why she was giving a great amount of anointment and love to this man in a way that was, did not seem appropriate at the time, but it was her gift. It was her understanding that this is what she should do. Is there any questions about that? I don't see any. Thank you. Very good. Because you must live and do the things in your ministry that you feel are right. Whether anyone feels that they are right or not, they will have a purpose and a meaning that is beautiful to God if he is the one that has put it on your heart to do these things. And grace is that which forgives those things that are unintentionally wrong. And I'm not saying that Mary was, but there are things that people do that they do not understand the situation or the, or the motives of others and may seem to be doing something wrong. But God is forgiving them because they know not what they do in many senses. So remember your unconditional love when it comes to the things that others do. They may have be doing it out of the goodness of their heart and out of the purity of what they believe is right, but it may not resonate with you. But that is all right to a certain extent. You do what you feel is right. But do not condemn or, or put your condemnation on others because that is judgment. And judge not yet lest you be judged, which we spoke about already. Much love to you all. And that is my message for today. Thank you, Elijah. I will bring someone else through at this time. Be well. Be well. Blessings. Namaste.
Did someone call for the Orion Council? We're welcoming every council that comes to speak with us today. Welcome. Thank you for coming. We are one of many councils out here in Orion space. There are much organization in trying to keep peace in the Orion galaxy. What is it that you wish to ask of us? Ooh, we have a lot of noise outside. Just to, um, but if maybe you can explain to us what is what is happening in your, in your galaxy where their peace is so hard to come by. It is not that it is so hard to come by, but it is something that must be discussed at it ever, always, and forever because people try to bring opinions to the galaxy that may not fit with all those that are within it. Now, as you may understand, the Andromeda galaxy is many different galaxy. I, I am in Andromeda 3. This is a galaxy which has a history of past warlike activities, but for the last three or four hundred of your kind of years, there has been no wars, and we are very happy for this. But it must be reiterated that all those that are in this part of space must understand one another, and many times they do not the same language of peace, if you can understand what I say. They speak in different terms, about how to keep the peace and how to make a peaceful unity. But at this point, we are able to keep it under a good condition. The thing is about your species, as you are very warlike as well, there are other species like you in the universe, but yours is a little bit more concentrated when it comes to your warlike activities, you seem to have one thought process and one thought process alone when it comes to your wars. And that would be that you bring religion into it and bring God into your wars and not, you do not fight wars without God being involved or very few times do you fight without God being involved, and that is an interesting thought process. There have been some areas on your planet that only include merchandise or commodities, but for the most part, God is also involved in protecting these things. So we are very interested in why you tend to want to bring God into all of your your wars, we find that inappropriate. Are we the only beings that do that? Do they in the universe? No, the there are some others, but you do it more often than most. In your observation, do you have an opinion as to why that is? It would appear that you have so many different beliefs that you have sector, sectioned yourself off and made God into many different smaller gods so that you may worship him in your own particular ways and have him only be helping your particular religion or belief system. Whereas there are many different belief systems, they fight for the possession of the God that you would uh, have. Understood. Um, Leela has a question. You're open for questions. Okay, hi. So I would agree with you, and, uh, and I would say we should maybe call a source. Then 
I can hear echo. A, is somebody there? Everyone else turned off. Your Everyone phone. else is muted. I see. Jan was not muted. Okay. I would agree with, with you when you said about fighting about gods, and I came to the conclusion uh, source would be the best way to see it. And whatever. Yes. Any, mm -hmm. So I do have a, a very close connection to Orion. I was a queen of Orion and some time some point and the name was arena could you tell me more about her what did we she are mean? from andromeda okay so th that was a different uh, galaxy then right correct but okay. we know about uh, some of the histories of other galaxies and arena was a very popular in the orion galaxy and ruled uh, for many for many, many of your Earth years, you would say that she was there for perhaps a century doing a guidance and ruling and being also a priestess of sorts. She was very much a holder of the faith in that area. What was her strength? Because she's my asp aspect and i would i would love to connect to her energy could you tell me like her strengths what are her strength was bringing clarity to situations mm. she was able to see and clarify the situation so that people could live uh in a more peaceful understanding uh also that she was able to uh speak in more than one kind of language so that she could bring messages and that kind of clarity to the people that she was dealing with. Thank you. You know, we had a huge Orion war. Are, yes. there, many, are there many souls from Orion war from that time, what was millions of years, incarnated on our planet today, Gaia? We know that there are some. I don't know about millions, but there are at least a couple thousand. How is the healing after the Orion War? Is the healing already in, in progress? Did, did the souls heal at this point, or that is still a subject what has to be considered in the future for healing work? Some is in um, the works that they are doing their past life understandings of what the war was all about and clearing it little by little. About 38% cleared, but it has a long way to go before it's completely cleared. And of course, there will be those that never do have their clearing completed. And that will be the last question. Uh, for the Orion people, can I ask myself, because I am active now in the healing work, it is possible it is for me energetically to send healing to Orion people? You are very gifted with healing and you work with gifted people. So the answer to that is yes. Okay, I will. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. And we accept your regards and return them to you thank you very much um ian has a question ian yes uh good morning thank you for being with us i back to what you were saying just a moment ago in terms of wars being fought in god's name um in addition to you know wars being fought on behalf of god it, you know, as they would call it. Are you? Does that also include when armies or soldiers pray for themselves to be victorious in battle against another group? Or is it depends on how they're praying for themselves. If they're praying for themselves to win in the name of God a battle that they believe that he has brought into existence, then yes. If they are just praying for protection for their own selves, not necessarily. Okay, thank you for making that distinction. 
Yes, there are many that will pray that God help them through the war, but do not believe that the cause is just and that the cause is for God's uh, to uh, to protect God, if you will. God does not need protection, and God does not need to uh, be in a battle. He would automatically win, would he not? Of course, the way we believe anyway. Yes, if he is all-powerful, and he is all doing all the things that he is saying that he should do, he should. should immediately be on the side of right. Now, I believe the reason that that does not happen is because there is angles of negativity from both sides and that he cannot support anything that's not pure. And both sides say God is on their side. And both sides say God is on their side. But neither one is pure, because would they be fighting a battle in God's name if it was? They would be peaceful and be calling him to keep the peace and calling him to be part of the power that keeps the peace uh, going. Would you say that um, it, it's probably most effective or uh, more correct, let's say, when, before going to a battle and groups pray, that they, it's more effective or appropriate that they pray for protection for themselves as an individual as opposed to their army? What is appropriate is in each individual's eyes, and that is the same with myself. I would say that it is also appropriate to pray for yourself as well as those around you if you care for them. Now, to pray for a victory in God's name is somewhat interesting because if it was really in God's name, it would be won already. However, I feel that some of them feel that it is appropriate because they feel that they are right in doing so. So I cannot judge that, but I can say that I do not believe God would have the same opinion. Okay, thank you. And I believe that statement that um, would, be, would be nice if it was made you know, public. <laughs> that is, if it was fought in God's name, it would already be won. So thank you very much for your... You would be going out for peace in God's name and not in to war in God's name. Because I see that on your planet they call those that do not believe the exact same way of your different religion infidels. Now, if they are the unfaithful, then that means that they would not have any faith in God whatsoever. But these particular ones are speaking about believing exactly the way they believe. And if you do not believe exactly the way they believe, then you are an infidel. infidel. And that is incorrect. In After others also, they are also believers and have faith. So Thank it you. is a paradoxical statement that they make. Understand. If you need clarity, please ask. No, is thank you. You've been very clear, and I thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Christine has a question. Greetings and blessings. Um, I just want to... Thank you. I was wondering if um, a lot of the problems that are happening on both sides is due to a lack of self-love. That is a very good question. If one would have self-love for themselves, then they would be able to be an example of it to the one next to them 
or, and the ones around it. It would not be necessary for you to uh, fight one another if you are being an example of love. Yes. Um, one of the many um, tools that we have on Earth to um, develop self-love is tapping. Have you heard of tapping? Yes. Do you think that is a good tool? It is one of many tools for energetic uh, create uh, healing to the body, yes. Okay, I was just wondering. Thank you. You have many things, one. Some may find it more powerful than others. Yes. So but even if a person... Their own... I'm sorry. Yes. So if a person didn't believe in it, but Even, but they pra tapping, but they practiced it. Would that um, still make a change in the person? Of course. Okay. Thank you. There is, you see, the intention for tapping has to be made clear as well. If it is for healing, if it is for bringing okay. balance, peace, or grounding if it's to brighten chakras, however you intend your healing to move forward, then therefore it will work in a greater way toward that intention, as well as bringing energy to the other parts of healing modalities. Meaning that if you are intending that it brighten the chakras, but it also sees that there is some emotion. Oops. Oh, here we go. He's back. Okay. Just give him a moment. Um, He's having internet issues. Was there here. some difficulty there? Yeah, you just you dropped Hello? out for a second. You're back. You're back. We hear you. Okay. We hear you. Did you, you miss anything that I said? Yes, you blacked out. <laughs> and what was I saying? You were explaining about whether a person believes ah. it or Yes. Tapping. I was saying about the intentions of it. Even yes. though your intention may be for one thing in tapping, it may also affect other parts of the body that need help. You may intend it for to be for brightening chakras or for helping the heart to heal from a... A, a sadness, but it also sees if there is illness or if there is other needs and works there as well. So it's similar to Reiki then? It is similar to all other he healing modalities for it includes other parts. Uh, its energy is included in healing as well. The holistic view, the whole... Yes. Instead of the parts. Of course, but of course the main intention is where it mainly goes, but uh -huh. it still can reach out. Energy goes where it's needed. That's good. I like to be reminded of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, there's a question from within the chat that says, it's from Mikey B and it says, <clears throat> is it possible for councils to speak to the common people, in quotes, instead of our heads of state? Because we are largely against their mindsets and wishes for the future. They don't represent me, he said. I see. Then you must create your reality so that they are more in tune with you. You see, people create their realities to include their opinions. If you do not include your p opinion in the reality, then you must live your life in that way. You must live your life as you feel that it is necessary. Of course, there are laws that, you, that must be obeyed, lest you uh, be pointed out to be someone who is against society. However, I do not believe that the reality that you create will be anything more than a loving and 
accepting place. And if you do this, you will be the example to others on how to create their own realities and change the world from the, the viewpoint of the populace and not the viewpoint of the government. You see, as I look at your planet, you are severely divided politically in your views, but you choose to have a political party and you choose to accept that part of that political party and that includes them into your decision making in some ways. If you are to create your own realm, you must disregard that um, your obedience to that party in some way and become neutral in your understandings of where th what they are trying to hand you or make you believe because for the most part they are telling you what they want you to believe about themselves and you must believe in yourself in your being in your energy in god and his uh implementation of your uh mission and what you need to do and exclude those opinions that are not for you now many times people will say but we cannot move forward without the opinions of the governments and that is an opinion that must be broken by the people you can and have risen up and taken charge of your own lives in some eras of your history this is would would be one of those times that it would be necessary for you to show that you are of love peace understanding and wisdom and not part of this battle for power and economic uh rule these people have their own best interests at heart and so must you in the sense that you are moving forward in love right and wisdom and you must understand that yes you must give love to everyone and unconditionally love everyone however you do not have to follow their opinions Create your own realm of goodness, peace, wisdom, and let it spread. Let it become greater. Thank you. As a follow-up question, um, one of the people in the YouTube chat was asking about the best way to raise the vibration, and, and that goes along with what you're saying, raising the vibration to create the reality that you want. Is there any recommendations that you have directly for doing that or any exercises you could lead us in that could help us do that? Well, it is always good for you to meditate or pray, of course, and the, always state your true opinion and honest opinion about things and do not just blindly follow things but you must be the leader of your own life in the in saying that i mean you must not just blindly follow all that is going on or fit into a space that they have made for you but if you do not agree if it does not resonate with you you must stand and say so and tell them why you must know why Remember that. If you are going to stand and say that this doesn't resonate with me, you have to let them know why it doesn't. Because it may not be coming from a place of love, understanding, or fairness. So you must absolutely stand for what is right, fair, loving, good, wise, and you will know that in your heart. And if you do not know the reason, Come, go to God and find out why it is not resonating with you. Perhaps you need to change an opinion. Perhaps you need to find out more about yourself and why you are not resonating in, 
in your wholeness with this, these ideas? Thank you. Um, there is a question uh, from Krellick that says, was it the Orion Wars that formed the Federation of today? All wars and all things of that nature helps to form federations. Federations are born from discontent and from the, for the need to unite and communicate. So I can say yes to that in the sense that we all need to communicate together to keep peace, to keep understanding. Without a proper communication, how can we understand one another and keep ourselves in alignment with protocols, thought processes, and ways of tradition and ritual that we do not understand. So therefore, we must become part of those rituals, traditions, and thought processes so that we may be at uh, one and in fullness with all that are with us. I am not sure I am speaking properly. There are some words in our language that do not actually translate properly and they are about peace and the quality of uh of communication our quality of communication must be much very pure when dealing with many species you must know exactly what you are saying one to another lest misunderstanding cause a gap or create a harsh feelings one to another. So therefore, when we speak, we make sure that we say it many different ways so that it is truly evident that we are not meaning to be harsh or intruding into their lifestyles with our own doctrines and thought processes. We make sure that everyone understands, at least on some level, that we are there for peace. This is how we are communicating with you today. We will say things in several different levels of understanding so that you realize that peace and creating of your own space is something that we are promoting for yourself and we promote it for ourselves. We would never come to your people and intrude and tell you how to live your lives, but we will tell you and give you advice on how we feel that you could do it better, but it is up to you to make the decisions to move in that direction. We will respect anything that you do as a species because we understand that you are evolving and you are different than we are. Thank you. Um, uh, Lily has a question, please. Thank you. Continue. I cannot hear her. I don't think she started speaking. Oh, Christine, go ahead, ask your question. Um, I was going to ask, um, does most of um, those on your council, are they using telepathy? Telepathy is acceptable. Remember this, with telepathy, you are speaking directly mind to mind, and you must use correct wordings and pronunciation therefore otherwise you are invading the space of the mind does that make sense to you so therefore we use telepathy with galactic life. same way what is being said we would not use our own language with other species not at first until we understand each other in a closer more intimate way but we would use the 
language of the galaxy, which there are many. Our galactic language is closer to reptilian, insectoid, and mantis than it would be to humanoid because and the Andromeda area is home to many of these kinds of species. So it is made up of several different languages, of course, but those that would be the greatest would be those that have the greatest populace. Um, in um, here on Earth, um, I understand there's a new um, hearing aid that allows people to hear the language, to hear somebody else's language. Um, it has a translator within it. Yes. Um, do you think this will um, help us get closer to um, not seeing differences in each other? Yes, provided that the interpretations are correct. Ah. Remember this. When yes. interpreting other languages, there are statements and different thing colloquialisms that do yes. not translate properly into other languages and can therefore be misinterpreted completely. Yes. Therefore, they must understand the colloquial languages because within one country, there could be several different statements that do not translate throughout the entire country the same. True. Is there, do you, do you see um, our telepathy or our communication, un our um, unconscious communication between each other, which to me be, would be something like telepathy, do you think that is um, enriching more of us? Yes, the reason for this is because it's not just words, it is emotions. Yes. You are also speaking in emotions as well as words, and when emotions come through with words, understanding becomes greater. Okay. This is why the need for emotion for those species that have lost it is important. Pure logic becomes illogical. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, also about Leela, are you back? Translation. I was, I was I was always here. Okay. Uh here is we the question. We could hear you before, so that's why. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Thank you. A simple question and I hope it will be complicated answer. <laughs> we hear you now. Uh what is the difference between human soul in non-human soul? They are both uh, sparks of God that he has given, but they are, every soul is unique. And with each soul, as they come into a certain reality, dimension, or species, they are given the understanding of this place, this time, this meaning as they are developing. But you see, the soul is very similar in every species in some ways. It is just grown and perceived differently in each culture. Do I have a human soul? A human soul, there is, let us say it this way. Is there such a thing as a human soul, or is it just a soul? I would say it is just a soul, but there are maybe right. different original origins, like everything has an origin. Yes, but does that make it that origin, or does it is the origin the soul? Uh, the origin is the source. So originally, we are from the one so, source. So as you move through whatever your first species that you chose to become part of, you will have your soul before you enter it. You know, when, you know, Anunna when, Anunna when Anunnaki created the humans with the Pleiadians, 
So how they create something what is already created by the source? They did not create it, they transmuted it. Manipulated, all right. Yes. So how but do the they... Soul hmm. Is the soul. So they've taken, they take, they took the outside, but they did not change the soul, but they changed the thought processes, the mind perhaps, but the soul then grows in the way that it is perceiving the reality. You know, the interesting, th interesting thing is with the reptilians and Anunnaki and the other, uh, that they insult humans, how primitive humans are, and this and that. But when we really uh, think about how humans were manipulated, mind-controlled, put in the box, black magic, a chip, goes on and on, is I wonder if any reptilian race, if they were, if there were all those things done to them, how do they will, uh, they will look? You know, the, the ar arrogance of this, uh, uh, from them is unbelievable, because nobody done so much abuse to them like they done to us. Eric Arrogance and negativity are something that are accepted, something that are developed. They are not part of the original soul, but they are part of the understanding of everything outside of uh, their understandings. Sometimes they are developed in a way where jealousy becomes so great that it turns them away from the truth. When you turn away from the truth of God, then the soul becomes corrupted in the sense that it is not honest with itself. And when the soul is not honest with itself, it moves a different direction from the ways of God. Now, that does not mean to say it was not created pure, but that it has faced things that it did not understand and reacted badly. Well, I hope that we unite in the future and then we can learn and talk to the all Anunnaki's reptilian setters and have a great party and exchange our experience. Create this experience within your mind, heart and soul and send it out to the universe. As you become what you create, of those around you are feeling your creation and if it is positive many of them do accept it as a wonderful and good thing create your positivity so that it may transfer to the rest of of existence i would love to see reptilians dancing in the glitter skirts to the disco rhythm that's my future creation. <laughs> I see. That does not compute with me because I do not understand it. However, a glittery dress is acceptable. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Bye. <clears throat> okay, Sheer has what a question. Can I, you explain disco music? Ah, yes. The... The uh, person that I am in has explained it to some degree. Okay, perfect. We won't. We won't. We won't challenge I you with a uh, better scaling. understanding of our conversation. Okay, perfect. Uh, Sheer has a question. Continue. Uh, yes. Um, hello, Ryan Council. Um, my question is about understanding timelines. Are timelines taking place in different physical realities, or do timelines take place only in the aspects of realities that we create in our own brain? Yes. Timelines are many faceted things. Uh, they are creation of God to keep track of all things that can be all at once. So if you are on one timeline, rather than another, then you are in an existence to be experiencing 
something slightly different than you would be on a different timeline. Therefore, all of the things that you are experiencing in all timelines are one thing. And you are reinforcing your existence and learning how to become a greater being by accepting the fact that all the timelines exist at once and that you may experience something from all of them at one point. But the timeline that you are on is your personal destination, your mission, and what you are creating at this time. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, Marlene has a question. Yes, greetings. I would like to come back to what you mentioned about the 38% clearing of the planet. And my it, not this planet, of the Orion, of oh, the Orion Wars. Okay, Those that were part of the Orion Wars and have come back into uh, corporeal forms are 38% cleared from past life of war resonations. I understand. Thank you for precision. Um, I would like to know um, if the slowing down of the clearing of our planet, if there's a direct correlation between the fact that humans are still controlled, mind controlled by negative frequencies, due to uh, specific implants that were put in us during my control pardon me i i did not you broke up several times could you please repeat it seems that the from my perspective perspective the slowing of the clearing of the planet our planet is there a direct correlation to be made between the fact that humans are still um, controlled by uh, negative frequencies that were bombarded, light workers and light warriors, to be more specific. Is that due to specific implants that were put into us at ever during every incarnation? And how can we bypass unquote this programming and free ourselves, please? Well. First of all, there is some miscommunication there. I know your implants and there are many that are bombarding your society, which is true, but they're also bombarding it in positive ways as well. The thing is, you still create your own reality. There are very few implants that are left that are negative. There are still some but they are not permitted by the Galactic Council. So they have been removed by different uh, species. You are not, uh, as a species, permitted to be bombarded, uh, and they have stopped much of this. I know that there are still uh, many that are saying that your species is being manipulated by this, that, and the other thing. But that is only to let you think that you cannot create your own reality. But you are free to do so. You are free to create your reality if you wish. But most of you believe you cannot because of outside forces. This is not true. God would not allow that. God would not allow you to not be able to create your own lives. This is propaganda from many negative sources that would have you believe that you are being controlled and that there's nothing you can do about it. Would God really put you in that place? No, obviously not. Um, thank you. So please know that some of this propaganda is from um, negative beings that do want to control you. You see, with this kind of information, they do control how you think and feel if you believe it. Understand that. Remember that this kind of information is controlling. Why would they even bring this negative thought process to light if they did not want to control your uh, 
your connection to positivity. They do not want you to have it. And therefore, create your own world, your own life, and reject the fact that you are being controlled because you can reject that control. Thank you very much. You are welcome. And I love the fact that you asked that because many are hearing very many negative things and are following it because they feel that they that it is true. But remember, the truth is you can can control if you are a depressed or negative person why is that so you have accepted this for yourself or so that because you believe everything that was told to you to be true do not believe that you are that negative person or believe that you live in this negative realm find positivity wherever you can and become more a part of it and start joining positivity so that it may you may see that it is not what is you really your thought process what is really your thought process is the soul and god's light and that is what you have to start concentrating on and not the negativity and not the manipulation do not be manipulated let yourselves be free you can do that. I only make that suggestion because it is part of how we have been able to suggest uh, exist here in space, one with another. If we were to build negative thought processes one to another, we could not exist. If one of our species would build a negative thought process and live within it it could not exist properly and would be very dysfunctional in many senses so they want you to be dysfunctional they want you to uh bring in as much negativity as possible so that they may destroy any hopes that you have for future missions or changing your world in a positive way Thank you. Much clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a question. There's a question. There's two questions in the chat. Um, Krelik has asked if uh, two two civilizations or two groups want to populate a world, how is that decided? Is there any kind of um, rules that are in place? And then Don has a question that's also related. Um, he he asks, um, does the Galactic Council decide who can colonize a world? Do they think of the watchers and the planetary consciousness that went into making that world? First of all, the Galactic Council has all planets mapped in the galaxy. And if there's one new that is found that is not claimed, then there is whoever has found it first may claim it for their population. Those that are already known are, are the Galactic Co uh, Council may, may tell whoever is there first that they may be a part of it. But it is uh, that there is some of this, meaning to say that they would like to know your intentions for this world, how someone to inhabit it especially if it is a world with a lot of minerals and uh, pro uh, positive, positive uh, access to things that are needed throughout space. Is it going to be used in a sharing manner, of a selfish manner? What is your intentions for this world? Now, if two different species were to come to the same world at once, the Galactic Council would say, you must share this world. You may have this portion and you may have this portion. It would be worked out in the fairest possible way because the chances that both species would want the same portion of the planet to live on is probably not true. But 
they would work it out that 50 percent would be for one and 50 percent would be for the other now if these things cannot come about in a peaceful manner then no one would get the world okay all right so there hasn't so i guess as a follow-up there hasn't really been at least at the start um of a planet there isn't fighting about who's going to colonize it that always ends up being a very peaceful process it there has been wars over planetary um ownership because the planet fill, is filled with uh many minerals and positive things that both species want and they do not want to share it they want it all for themselves and war has happened i am not saying that is not true but it is not the galactic council that causes the war they would step in before the war begins to try to keep peace uh, until the settlement is agreed upon okay perfect thank you very much <clears throat> i'm trying to see if there's any other questions there was one question in the chat about um, artificial intelligence as it's let me just see if i can find it one second you do have influences from artificial intelligence and this is being uh the galactic government also is trying to keep them out of your space However, they are very clever, and they can cause some chaotic thought processes and have done so many times. But they are working to keep that influence away from your people. It is there at times, and they are not really interested in your people as a whole because you are not developed enough. They have all your technology already, and they have all the things that... Uh, they do not uh or i should say they do not need anything from your world and they do not need your hybridization either and so they are really only interested in causing disruption and control in some ways on your planet they're really not interested in anything that is there materialistically Okay. Um, there's also a question from Krulik that says, if a native civilization destroys itself, can an outside civilization colonize that world since the previous civilization was unable to care for it and claim ownership? This is rare, but it does happen. But usually when a world is destroyed, it's fully destroyed and there's not much left to colonize. But there have been cases when the population has been thinned and there's not much left of the population to call it um, uh, to have uh, access to the entire planet and that is when sometimes other species would want to come in and perhaps uh, build it rebuild it and they would have to have permission from those that are inhabiting it still which is maybe only a few but it is still their world and still uh, they have ownership, but they may grant permission for other species to come. Now, if there is a, if they are forcing their way onto the planet, the gov galactic government may have to step in. Okay, perfect. There's a question about healing. Uh, Leela has a question. I'll let her answer hers, but maybe they'll dovetail. Um, Amazing Grace in the chat says, in healing uh, ancestral generational family lines and timelines, how pertinent is this? And she said she's been working, or he, excuse me, have been working with many light beings in healing um, the family timelines. Is this hitting a mark? Is this, I guess it's saying, is this correct? Um, is, or is there something that needs more attention and action? Whatever your intention is, first, Pay attention to that intention. And so if that is your intention, then that is what you are doing. 
Lila, go ahead and ask your question. The question is about healing. Energy draining during the healing. When is a core and why is it so cool? And what could you tell me more about it? Energy draining? Yes. I heard that when I am healing, I got some energy drain, drain, drainage, drainage or draining, losing energy. Who is drained of energy while healing? I am not drained, but I heard that when I am healing, the energy drain, draining or cool. So that means it can happen to many healers. So I would like to know more about it. What is the when, Let me tell you about healing modalities. I think that is what you're speaking of. The healing modalities should bring the energies from outside of themselves. You do have energy within yourself for healing. You have natural healing abilities. However, if you're using them correctly, you will bring them bring energies from the earth, the universe, God, and other beings to help you with your healing process. If this is the case, you should never feel drained. You should always be flowing with the energy of healing. The energy should always be flowing. If you feel drained at the end of, at end of a healing, that means you've put too much of yourself into the healing and you have not let enough energy flow through. Now, if you're talking about when you're healing other species that they feel <laughs> drained, is that what you're saying? Uh, I am saying that I was told by spiritual being that when I am doing my healing, uh, energy drainings or course, I do not feel ever drained when I heal then it is not true uh, energy draining should not happen during healing at all not if you're doing it properly and letting all the energies flow as they should properly flow the only way draining would occur in any sense or form is if it was intended that way and I do not think or do not sense that you are uh, that you are meaning that at all and i do not believe that anyone is drained when you are doing healing they are just trying to stop you from your healing that makes sense so now that was a general question for all healers because we don't understand everything of course in 3d so thank you you're welcome when you are doing healing with any modality it should flow through you and and you should be getting a healing as well. And so if you feel drained at the end of your healing, you have not let that flow properly from Mother Earth, as you call it, that's what he said. And right. from universe and from spirit, you have not let it flow properly and you're using too much of your own energy. Open right. yourself up to these other energies. Uh, I started to heal reptilians. And as a question, it is a danger for me to heal them. I do not feel danger uh, by them. And it is possible to see if I at least healed one reptilian. Uh, it is not dangerous to send healing to any species or individual. Healing is a positive modality. If they do not want to accept it, that is one thing. If it goes and starts to heal, that is another. It is not a negative thing in any sense, or it is not a danger to anyone who is a healer. If you are sending out the healing and it's not accepted, that is one, but it is not a danger to you. They will not, uh, there is no repercussions. Many times they do not even know where the healing is coming from unless you tell them, unless you are right there with them. But if you are sending long distance healing, they do not know exactly where it's coming from, but they do understand that it's coming. And um, many times there are certain species that do not feel healing modalities as it comes to them. It's, it's just that they are not sensitive enough or not, we're not wanting to be sensitive enough to even know that it's happening. But the soul is getting, isn't true? 
it will receive if they accept it right so that is very important question for all healers that nobody uh, anybody who wants to love whoever they want to love they can heal so thank you wonderful wonderful thanks yeah so many there are many that believe that you must get permission from those that are being healed you may ask them personally if they want a healing and if they say no that that's fine do not give them a healing then but you may send them healing from a distance or may send them healing at other times, their subconscious will accept or not accept the healing. So, it. but if you ask them personally and they say no, it is maybe that they're embarrassed to get a healing at that time. They may actually want it and still say no. So send your healing from a distance then. And the subconscious, if it wants a healing, will accept it. Now, there are those that say, ah, I have, I, I don't believe in healing modalities. I think they're of a negative connotation or whatever. If you send your healing to them from a distance, then the subconscious will know if it's negative or positive and accept it or deny it. You do not have to ask permission for long distance healing or for healing modalities. Do you ask permission to pray for someone? No, you just use your prayer and it is as powerful as healing in many cases, for it is a, a kind of energy that creates positivity. Thank you, wonderful, wonderful information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. I don't know that there's any more questions. Just let me check one quickly one more time because everything was moving so fast. A moment. One moment, yes. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of chat that goes on the chat. Um, Krolik says, uh, no, let me see. That's not right. Oh, Krolik says, why would... He's, he was, he's asking, I guess, about your civilization. He really wants to know why would civilizations fight each other? One would think that such an advanced race would go beyond a warlike state. But you've said that, haven't you, that you've stopped fighting? Yes, I've explained why they do that. But like I said, some, some existences have become negative. Even though God starts with a spark in their soul, they turn against it because it is of jealousy or they feel that they have greater power or influence or manipulation by being negative. And there's so basically, a question in the room. Oh, sure, sure. So just to clarify what you're saying. So some, some societies, even if they're advanced, they are negative still. Advanced doesn't necessarily Correct. mean enlightened. Correct. Okay. And then start off and end up uh, becoming negative over time. Sad thing to see. The reason for this is because they lose, they start losing emotion. They start uh, de delving into pure intellect. They start delving into uh, things that they shouldn't. And as they lose emotion, they lose clarity in their decision making. And like I said, Pure logic can be illogical. Exactly. And can be very negative. Did you have a question in here? Please come. Uh, my question is about um, the galactic councils. Is there like a, an, an order or a, um, like, uh, uh, the way I want to put the question is, is you know, there's the Orion Council, there, a Dramatic Council, you know, there's so many different councils. How do they all intermingle with each other? That is an actually fairly easy question to answer. Each each galac galaxy has its own government, but in order to maintain communication one with another, there are some galaxies that do not have governments. By the way, they are still not advanced enough to have a lot of space travel they're still not advanced enough to do this and that so there are they are watched over by some of the other galaxies uh, just as 
you say your civilization has not come into being into being into the galactic politics but you're still being watched over but there are news feeds that go out throughout the galaxies and if uh, they go on several different galactic channels if you will if you want to call them channels i'm not sure if that is yeah. the pro pro appropriate word but they are in different frequencies and megahertz and these are uh sent out throughout the galaxy and and at the end of the galaxies they're sent out from beyond the end of the galaxies so that inter universal news is possible but of course not all galaxies can have this not all galaxies are equipped with this thought process but there are there's a connection of at least 15 galaxies that do communicate and have similar information as it is sent out now remember some do not interpret it exactly as it was sent out just as news from your planet from one part of your planet goes to the other part of the planet it may not be as accurate as it is in that hometown is that is that the is it can we ask one more question do you have time Certainly. okay sheer has a question hello uh, in you yes you just spoke about the galactic uh, news i was wondering when you, br you do you broadcast your news do you have someone like sitting in front of a screen saying uh, today this and that happen and everyone no. this? there are some galaxies that prefer to have a face attached to their news but it is not necessary the news is put out there and um, it is done, it, it's taken from the source and they analyze the information and make sure that it is as accurate as possible. And then someone transfers it either by voice or by <laughs> some form of communication, usually galactic writing or and they send it out from their galaxy to the all the councils and to the ends of the galaxy where it's picked up and sent to the other galaxies. You realize that between the galaxies there are some spaces and some there's some great distances. And so at the ends of the galaxies there is it's necessary for greater communication uh to be used to uh send out to other places uh that has been determined by the galactic council how to do this and each galaxy has their own way of uh uniting with the galaxy next to them or galaxies next to them so there's like an editor and he gets the all the different stories and he picks up the items that he thinks that should uh, be broadcast to everyone yes and there are times when the news is dire and then and there are times when the news as it reaches out to the other galaxy becomes watered down and unnecessary and in some galaxies news from this galaxy may have no meaning whatsoever because they are not in touch with whatever the news item is and final question does that channel or broadcast does it have a name like we have like cnn channel Fake two Fake no news. it would be on it would be on freak it would be a frequency that they are it would not have a name no they the frequency of information it's just an information frequency um, now there are several sub galactic 
frequencies that people send out news on and may just do a few planets in their area or solar system or whatever. so there are subgalactic frequencies as well that you can tap into and get news from some planets that are just it's local news as you would say okay thank you very much but it is just the information frequency and it changes it can be sent out in a couple of different frequencies depending on the uh, evolution of the culture and how advanced they are technology wise it can go interdimensional yes i heard someone ask okay um we have reached uh the top of the hour uh, we don't know if uh you you want to continue or or have you come to your conclusion now but we do appreciate all of the amazing there, questions. We, I don't have any questions now. That is fine. And then it is time to finish. Okay. Well, thank you and much love to you. It has been an, a very enlightening and in-depth conversation. So appreciate all the answers that you've given, but all the questions that have been posed by everyone. So thank you Before for that. Before I go, I would like to say something about the council itself. Yes, we are please. A council we are a council of reptilians. There are um, reptilians, insectoids, mantis beings. There are some tree beings. There is some bipedal uh, beings as well that you might know as gray, grays. And there are some even uh, those that have migrated here that have that are bipedal as well and they are called there are some octurians here that are uh, visiting and some pleiadians here that are visiting but this council that we have does a great deal of work in keeping peace in the andromeda areas uh, the andromeda four we have a special name and Andromeda 3 and Andromeda 2 and 5. We have special names for the different galaxies. You call them 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 12 Andromedas. But we have our own name for them. Andromeda 3 we call Ramsia. And it is our area of interest, plus the the, the uh, galaxies around us, of course. But I just wanted to mention this to give you an idea of who we are. I happen to be uh, speaking for them, and I am a bipedal person. I am not a, of the uh, reptilian, insectoid, or mantis people, but they thought that it would be best to represent us uh, someone that was bipedal because you are also bipedal well uh, we thank you and and uh can you please give us your name and, and i apologize in, uh for not asking this information up front of you because of course we have the great honor of speaking with uh an advanced civilization and it's really our duty to to respect you and to ask you those questions. So my sincerest apologies for not asking that first. And for it's the future, we will definitely ask more about who is we're, we're talking to and the civilization they're representing because that is incredibly interesting and important information for us. So well, thank you so very much. I am much. the ambassador from this area to the Milky Way. And so that is your galaxy. And my name is Cly. Should we call you Ambassador Cly then? Cly is fine. Title to me. Could could you tell us on the end what is bipedal? That means two legged. Wow. 
Is that English or galactic language? No, that's English. Okay. You're, bipedal. You're bipedal too, Lila. That well, is your name. Well, bipedal. I am an alien, so I don't understand all English. Thank well, you. bipedal means two. Bi is two. Pedal is how many limbs, so, or uh, how many yeah. walking limbs. Yeah. Okay, so. Dogs are quadrupedal. So. There are, I should be more specific and say that I'm more humanoid bipedal. Okay, so do you have hair and a head or, or like we do, or? Hair is not necessary any longer, but. Yes, we can grow it if we wish. Oh, we have a lot of men on our planet that would really like to grow it. As Are you yes, <laughs> it is for fashion on your world. You probably do not actually need it either much anymore. Are you considered um, handsome? Pretty? I would consider myself <laughs> handsome. However, <laughs> you would have to like a different color of so just give it a second maybe he'll pop back in here he comes back in oh is he back ask about the trees <laughs> we will we will that i'm going to ask him that as well that's my question we lost you there for a second you were describing your handsome color but you didn't get to say what that was um he's muted can someone help on jim's side he's muted unmute yourself yeah we have no sound from you Hmm. It, it was saying that you muted. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. but that was that was me clicking. Okay. But he was already sound gone. All so right. they just said, "Give us a minute." That was also my question, Ian. I'd like to know what the name of the tree beings are as well. <laughs> Clay, are you there? Oh, he might need to. No, pop we out. can't hear him. We can't hear him. I can read your lips. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to pop out and pop back in. Yeah. You might need to drop out and come back in. We'll wait for you. We apologize to our galactic friends. He was too handsome. That's right. <laughs> His handsome just crashed the webinar. <laughs> he crashed him. He crashed the energy. I have to say the frequency. Yeah. We don't hear you yet. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, you're muted. Can you please unmute yourself? But he cannot hear, so. No, I think they can hear. Ah. Here, us there now. we go. Yes, we do. Thank you. So you were describing your handsomeness, and then you crashed out. <laughs> Perhaps they did not want me to boast. <laughs> Probably not. We do have a question about uh, uh, what is the name of the tree beings? Oh, the Philandia Saskaviat. The Philandia Saskaviat. Oh, that's hard. Philandia Saskaviat. Philandia Saskiavet. It means we that stand on our roots and are brave and proud. Beautiful. Beautiful. Maybe next time we will get to speak with one of them as well. Send our greetings to them. They are in the room with me now. Well, much love. I, I, have, I, I do and maybe some other people I'm sure is, have a very strong connections to trees and uh, have had tree teachers. They are very so. tall. They are, <laughs> 30, they are 30 feet tall. We have to make well, special arrangements for when they come to the meetings. My goodness. <clears throat> it is time for us to go now. Well, thank you very much. 
it's been like as we said a pleasure to speak with you Clay, and to your to your group to the orion council so much love it's from everyone right, here andromedan. excuse us uh, the andromedan council thank you please be aware we are andromeda three and this is the andromeda three council okay well thank you Reading again to you and we are very happy to have spoken to you today. We ask that we may return at some point. Yes, you're sure. always welcome. Yes, you're welcome. Handsome. Yes. They would ask me to say a blessing before I leave. Yes, please. I will say it in your tongue for our tongue would be undistinguishable or unintelligible to you. I will say this. May God help us always be at peace and always be in communications in the fullness of the understanding of the word. May we all grow together and create realities of beauty understanding, wisdom, kindness, and joy. May we all find that God is willing to help us all and be part of who we are. May we understand that he is not to be possessed by one species or one peoples, but is free to interact with all. For he is the creator of all things and is God to, in many, many millions of hearts and billions of hearts i know that is a finite number and there is no number that would count as large as he can but i bring you blessings from the universe from us to you and for your continued advancement and enlightenment we thank you for this time of fellowship together and wish only the best for you. Call us and we will help you in any way that we are permitted. Much love, many blessings, and God be your greatest light. Thank you. Much blessings and greatest love light to you too. Hello. 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 Thank you. Hi, Jim. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you. I, for a minute there, I thought somebody else was coming in there. Oh, but <laughs> we would have been happy but, to. Uh, that's okay. Very interesting what? conversation. The Andromeda Council. For some reason, I thought in the beginning they said Orion, and so I had it in my brain. Andromeda. I think he did say Orion at the beginning, and. Mm. But I think they it switched over to a, a Andromeda. Oh, but I think you're right. I think he said Orion at first. In mid and mid mid they, mid conversation, he changed councils on us. <laughs> well, he was. It was. I think there was a couple different representatives yes. there. Yeah. He, what she said, the person in the background said that he's Orion, but he was part of the Andromeda council, yeah. total council. Yeah. Yeah. Very okay. interesting. Very interesting. A lot of really nice questions. Very good. Good questions yeah. from the chat. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, so. Uh, thank you everybody for being here and uh, we'll see you next time. Um, check out uh, Karen Newman on the Kevin Moore show and your oh. class about, uh, tell them about your class. Oh, okay. My class, we'll have a class starting in uh, mid January on sacred sound and mantra. Um, we'll be exploring uh, the bija mantras, which are the seed sound mantras that are the basis of Sanskrit, but they're also the basis of all creation of the universe. So wow, cool. we'll be learning that. that. 
Yeah, and then also coming up, we have a couple announcements. Uh, we have Jim, yeah. who was also on the Kevin Moore show. He's just come out last week, so please uh, go to Kevin Moore on, he, probably it's on your page, but and we'll make sure we get it on the Human Colony page, but the Kevin Moore show uh, has Jim Charles there, a, a nice uh, a nice uh, show there. And then also on the uh, the first through the sixth, we have the Hilo Ascension Workshop in Sedona, Arizona. So someone is someone has unmuted themselves. Okay, we have the uh, Human Colony Ascension Workshop. In it's Ian, I think. Ian, there. Stop unmuting yourself, Ian. <laughs> Okay, we have the Human Colony, let's one more time, Human Colony Ascension Workshop in Sedona, Arizona, February 1st through the 6th. There's limited places available, but there is a special running through the end of the year, and uh, the total price can be paid in two parts. Not everything has to be paid up front, so if you pay $278 now, you can pay $278 at the workshop when you arrive. They'll be teaching Galactic Reiki with Takur. Um, there'll be classes on channeling, telepathy, and all the different healing modalities that are involved with Human Colony. Jim and Max will be there, as well as Jonathan C. Martin, who will be there also channeling. So it's not to be missed. If you feel inspired to go, definitely go to humancolony.org. Also, this has been Human Colony Saturday webinar, and if you would like to be in the room and be able to ask your questions directly, you can become a member of Human Colony by going to humancolony.org and for $10 a month you have access to all of the paid webinars as well as any of the classes that are going on. So you'll be the first one to know about them. You. Excuse me? Okay. All right. And, Very good. Thank you. Yes. And then also two things. The channel panel will be coming up on Christmas, or excuse me, New Year's Eve Eve on the 30th of December in Burbank, California. So if you go to channelpanel.com, thechannelpanel.com, you can get your tickets. There are a few seats left. There's only 278 places and it's filling up. We were just informed we're almost sold out. But uh, I will be there. Um, Daryl Ankle will be Max there. Is going to be there. Max will be there. Yes, we're going to meet up with Max. We've got also Sarah that's going to be there. Um, there's a guy named Frank that's coming all the way from uh, Slovakia to be there. So if you have a chance and you can be in Burbank, please, please come. Yes, I think there's I, enough announcements right now. Yes. Do you have any other announcements? I think that's it for now. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. We were a little over time, but we started a little bit late. So next week I'll be channeling on the 23rd of December. So Karen Newman will be channeling Theo. So please, yes, hopefully we'll see you there. The Eve of Christmas Eve. Yeah, it'll be the Christmas Eve Eve. Channeling yes. Theo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Very All good. Right. Thank much you. love to everyone, and I will talk to you later. All right. All perfect. Right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Namaste, everyone. It was good to see everybody. It's good seeing you, too. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Love you. Love you. Love you, too. We're still alive. I heard in the background. <laughs>